Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate two no-sew Halloween costume projects. Look through your wardrobe or your children's wardrobe for clothes that maybe they're outgrowing or they don't like anymore because we're going to be shredding them up. So let's get started. For this costume, all you'll need is a pair of scissors, any size scissor, or a rotary cutter and any size rotary cutter you want. This is a tank top shirt, and I'm just using white because it was the, the one color I could find that was close to the size I needed. And all I did was lay it on a rotary cutting mat. This is really important or lay it on a surface you don't, uh, that's safe for your rotary cutter. And all I did was just go at different angles all over the shirt to cut it up. Then at the end, I kind of cut a few little strings along the bottom. Now I'm gonna flip it over. And on the front, I just took a red marker and kind of indicated that this was blood. I know it doesn't look like blood, but it just sort of represents that. And I mushed a little streak going down this way and put little spatters of red dots all over the shirt. For the pants, you can either use scissors or a rotary cutter. Remember, if you're using a rotary cutter, make sure you have a rotary cutting mat. And all I did at the end of the pants was just cut some little slits in here. They can be all different sizes. Then I went up a little higher and kind of cut some holes in the pants and you're done. <laughs> this next costume is also no sew. Now you could hand baste all these strips on. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to glue because I thought it was faster. I would avoid clothing that is stretchy. Now this one was, so I had to do something a little different because if it wasn't stretchy or if it was stretchy and I put these strips on and I didn't take that into account, it's going to be hard to get the costume on. It's better to choose non-stretch fabric. Again, look for old clothes in your house to do this on. Because I was gluing these strips of fabric on, I had to make sure that I inserted something that would prevent the front and back of the clothing to be glued together. So you don't want that to happen. So I cut shapes of cardboard and wrapped foil around it so that the glue would not stick, st stick to the cardboard. Or if you have plastic sheets that the glue won't stick to, you could use that also. So this was stretchy fabric, so I actually cut it much wider than the pants and squeezed it in so that the strips would not be too tight and it would give a little bit. Suggested fabrics are a white or an off-white or even a very pale gray would be good. Look for old bed sheets that you have that you might be able to use. Or if you need to buy fabric, look on the clearance table first. If you're a quilter, you probably have muslin fabric in your stash and this is what I'm using. So once you get your fabric, you want to make sure that it tears easily. So look for cotton fabrics. And I'm just going to cut a little slit here up at the top. Now, the width of your fabric of your strips depends on the size of the individual. If it's for a little tiny person like I made, I only cut mine maybe two, two and a half inches wide. A larger person maybe cut them up to five inches wide. And you just keep going along your fabric cutting little slits. And then you just tear it. And you're tearing it to make the edges look roughed up and old. 
So here's how I started. I first inserted my cardboard or plastic sheets inside, all over inside. I started on the pant legs at the bottom. So I took my fabric and laid the edge at least a half inch or to an inch below the end of the pants. And then I put glue on the strips. So I took my glue, you can either use fabric glue or craft glue, craft glue is fine, and I did a few little beads of glue along the starting end, and then just on the edge that's gonna be glued down to the fabric, I would do a little bit, maybe eight inches or so, apply it to the fabric, and then keep adding the glue as I went along. So as I wrapped it, I finished wrapping all the way around to where I started, then I kind of pulled the fabric up at an angle, overlapped again, put, keep, continue putting glue on that one edge, keep wrapping around the leg until you get all the way up to the top. So you want to finish the two legs first. Then you start around the hip area. C continue wrapping, applying the glue, and wrapping. I didn't wrap on the very top band because I wanted to make sure it's stretched. If you're gluing strips onto the zipper area, you don't want to close up the pants. So you want to go over, here let me get a pencil. So here would be your pants zipper area. So you would want to wrap over this edge and cut it so that the pants can be put on. Now here's the shirt. I again started at the very bottom and overlap, let it hang down below the end of the shirt and glued and continue wrapping all the way up to the armpit area. Then I took strips and laid it up over the shoulder and down the back, gluing it on and doing the same thing over here. Then just placed random strips going around the neckline. Then going out to the end of the sleeves and wrapping it just like you did the pant legs all the way up to the shoulder. So you can see on the pant legs there's a slight diagonal pattern. That's because I was pulling it up to get it to come up and overlap. And then up here on the butt area, I wrapped it up over. I actually put a piece through the crotch area. You can do that if you like. When I was done, I went back and cut little tiny slits here and there. And this is for ease of movement in case the strips are a little too tight. This way it will expand a little bit. I did it on both the top and the bottom. Here's the top, so I wrapped it all the way up to the armpit and then placed pieces up here, up, up, over the shoulder, across here. And then at the neck, I took scissors and cut some of the strip off so that it would be curved so it could go around the neck. And again, I cut little slits all around for ease of movement. Uh, we would love to show you what Parker looked like in the mummy costume, but he really wasn't in the mood. He's not quite two years old yet, so he didn't quite understand what was going on. But if you're interested in other Halloween-related tutorials, check below your YouTube screen in the description section. You just scroll down, click on Show More or the down arrow, and you will see those links appear. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time, and happy sewing! If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.